Hello friends, welcome to episode 3 of our economics course. We hope you enjoy these videos just as much as we love creating them for you. Let's talk about opportunity cost. What's that? If you saw episode 1, you already know the gist of it. But today, my friends, we dig a bit further. An opportunity cost is, basically, what you give up in order to do something else. In episode 1, I told you a little story. You wanted to watch an episode of your favorite TV show tonight, but a great friend of yours invites you to watch a new movie at the cinema. You have to choose one in detriment of the other. If you choose to watch the TV show at home, your opportunity cost is not being able to watch the movie that night. If you go out and see the movie, then your opportunity cost is not watching your TV show at home. You can't win. Opportunity cost is a key concept in economics, which is used to ensure a more efficient allocation of resources. For example, consumers use the concept to choose what to spend their income on, producers use it to look at the profit foregone by not making an alternative product, and governments use it to look at the lost value to society from the policies they choose not to implement. However, there are some problems with using the concept of opportunity cost. 1. Often, not all alternatives are known. 2. Some factors don't have alternative uses. 3. There may be lack of information on alternatives and their costs. And 4. Some factors, like land, can be hard to switch to an alternative use. In order to better understand the implications of opportunity cost, you must know about a tool widely used in economics, the production possibility frontier. In business analysis, the production possibility frontier, or PPF, is a curve that illustrates the variations in the amounts that can be produced of two goods if both depend on the same limited resource. Since the basic problem in economics is how to best allocate scarce resources, a production possibility frontier shows the options that are available when you consider the production of just two types of goods or services. This production possibility frontier shows the maximum number of goods Y on the horizontal axis and X on the vertical axis that can be made using the existing level of resources. Notice that in point A you produce 90X and 60y. But if you move along the curve to point B, you can now produce less of x and more of y. In other words, there is a trade-off between producing one good or the other. Producing more of one good means producing less of another. All points on the curve are productively efficient. Why? Because all resources are used as efficiently as possible to produce the maximum possible output. If a point is inside the curve, it means that you left resources unused, and that's not efficient, is it? However, not all points on the curve are allocatively efficient, because not all points will reflect the production of goods that people want or need. Maybe people need more of X than Y, for example. If a point lies outside the PPF, it means that it is not achievable with the current level of resources in the economy. It would only be achievable with one thing, economic growth. With that said, what do you think happens to the curve when economic growth happens? Tell us in the comments. I'm serious. The answer is, it shifts outward. You see, a PPF shows what's possible using a particular level of resources. If this level of resources is fixed, then, movements along the PPF just show a simple reallocation of those resources. However, if the total amount of resources changes, then the PPF itself moves. If we're talking about an increase in resources, that would mean that the total possible output of that economy would also increase. And so, the PPF shifts outward. Improved technology or improvements to labor can also shift the PPF outward, because it allows more output to be produced using the same resources. Now, if we're talking about fewer total resources available, the opposite happens. The PPF shifts inward, showing that the total possible output has shrunk. This means negative economic growth. 
And that's it for today's video. If you liked it, consider clicking that like and subscribe button. And if you want to see the full course with no ads while supporting us, head over to our Patreon page. If not, we make sure to always provide you with half of our courses for free, so you can still study with us. Have a great day, thank you for watching.